Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denise Myrick. I'm a product manager with the Spatial and Graph team. Thank you so much for joining today's Ask Tom session for Spatial Technologies. Um, today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Albert Godfriend, and he's going to talk to, about, to us about REST, JSON, and other topics. Um, Albert, when you have a, when you're ready, let's get started. Thank you, Denise. So yeah, let's let's get started. Um, the title, as a first warning, the title is a bit of a misnomer. Initially, we wanted to talk about JSON and REST and more, but then we realized that the JSON topic itself is quite significant, and so I will talk a bit about REST, but we'll have another session, which will essentially be the next session that will focus on REST. REST meaning here uh, using Oracle's ODS to deal with GeoJSON and JSON in the database. Right. So today we'll focus on what is JSON. I well, we know it now. I expect that you know what is JSON. Um, what is GeoJSON and how do we do things like uh, interoper interoperating JSON and uh, a geometry database? And also how do we upload, extract, use, and connect to and get GeoJSON data from all sorts of places? And for that, we're using Spatial Screen. What else? All right, so we'll... That's the agenda for today. Um, it'll be, first of all, the introduction about what is JSON, I don't really mind what it is, uh, GeoJSON, how is it used in database, and then how the import, export, interoperate. And then at the end, like I said, I will just have like a, just say yes, you can do ORDS as well, and it will use GeoJSON. So, yeah. The previous session also, I think there's a well, there's a, a link here. You, of course, you will get a recording of what we are doing here, and you also get a copy of this slide on the PDF at least, and you will get all these. Uh, but this is where you can get a recording in uh, previous sessions. So the last session was about Python, and it's available, still available there to watch. Also, a reminder: we have a uh, defined a sort of reference architecture for a geospatial data platform using Oracle. So the bits and pieces that are needed to use the Oracle platform, the environment database, but not just database, the tooling around it as well, as a uh, as a platform to manage, store, process, redistribute, refine your spatial data. And there's a URL for this. So I'm not going to go, go through there, but you can follow that and you will find out the tools we are offering and the way this can be structured using cloud or using on-premise. That's your choice. So why JSON? Why are we talking about? You know, it used to be, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so that XML was, you know, the, the point of choice for exchanging data between applications. I remember all the soap and everything like that. Everything was XML. And now today, the poor XML is no longer so much in, in favor uh, JSON is becoming much more like something that people look at. All the REST services are, um, are using um, JSON as output. Uh, they're also using JSON as input. It's some like matter of it. Don't worry. This thing, you know, they, they went back afterwards and took XML with them. So they didn't really abandon XML like that. So don't, don't, don't be shy. Don't be, you know, sad. It didn't really happen like that. It's just a picture, right? So what's JSON? One way to think about it is the fat-free alternative to XML. XML is great. It's very structured. Well, JSON is very structured. But XML is very verbose. You can remember, you have things, start tags, end tags, start tag, end tags, for a lot, a lot of text. Well, JSON is much lighter. It only has three brackets, uh, and that's all you have, and then key value pair. So it does actually use less space, which is useful. No, it takes less space compares the whole thing as well. And it's also easier to, sorry, easier to process, okay? XML, JSON, they are very close, but still different. XML, while well, it's self-describing, JSON too. There are human readable. Uh, well, let's use one meaningful. <clears throat> They're hierarchical, so values and values. They, they contain repeating numbers. Uh, JSON will use arrays. XML will be using just repeating values and you know, steps and then steps, 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 like that. They can be fetched through uh, a REST, extension API request. 
And gives me a bit simpler, shorter, quicker to read and write. Can use a schema less. That's important. XML has a schema that will constrain what you can write, and, and that makes it possible to detect bad XML. JSON does not, although there is you know, a work in progress to actually define a, a schema for JSON so that you could actually make sure that whatever JSON you are producing, JSON producing is matching that schema. Why is JSON better? Well, XML is actually a bit complicated. If anybody uh, view has done processing XML in Oracle, for example, well, yeah, there are PSQL packages, but they are pretty complicated. To be honest, the JSON is much simpler because JSON has essentially passless access in database. You can do with dot notation. Of course, you use some complex thing for generating JSON and arrays, then you still need to do a bit, um, a bit more work. JSON is also natively interpreted by language like JavaScript, Python, in the Python dictionaries. Python, and then you can access it just like any Python dictionary. So it's, it is in favor nowadays. It might not remain in favor, maybe the future will not, but today it is really the structure that is, uh, is very popular. Oracle has JSON support, it's native in all Oracle databases. And that means two things, it means that <clears throat> You can access data in the database through RDS as JSON. So you can get the data out as JSON and push it back in that JSON if you want. And inside database, well, you can use that in SQL and, and really mix and match SQL and, and JSON. Um, it uses standard data types, but it used to use standard data types, varchar 2 or CLOB. Now there's also a JSON data type, dedicated data type for that in 21C. Uh, so it's indexed, etc., and it's developer-friendly API. So a bit of example here, this is how you would actually use ORDS to put, to write some documents, some JSON document into, well, a row in some table. And this is how you actually look inside that document. Just a C document, first name, C document. Very easy, it's just dot notation, very easy. No need to do any complex parsing like you would have to do with XML. So this is all great. There's even a uh, specialized version but a specialized autonomous database, uh, JSON autonomous database for JSON. That is, it's just not really, but it is specifically configured to work well for, uh, with JSON. Now, why GeoJSON? GeoJSON is JSON for geometries. For XML, there's GML, geographic markup language, which is XML for geographies. Which, and, and that is actually an ISO standard being used, uh, for example, in the UK. The UK National Mapping Agency is only distributing its data in GML. It's been doing that for like, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so. It was, I think, one of the pioneers to do this sort of thing. But GeoJSON. Well, no, GeoJSON here is uh, an example of the things you would do in Oracle. So JSON value is uh, a, uh, a JSON built-in processing function that lets you build a, uh, in that case, a JSON with the JSON geometry, passing the type and coordinates, and that returns this whole thing, right? and vice versa. Now, one important thing to be aware of when you talk about JSON is that the coordinates, the X and Y, we see here, this 25.16, these are expected to be in long lat, in GPS coordinates, in WGS84, 4326, for you who are really into uh, you know understanding how these things are, are coded. Why is that? Well, there was actually uh, so there is a standard for that. There, uh, there's an RFC for that. There was uh, a previous RFC in the um, I think in the early two thousands uh, that actually included the ability to use any kind of coordinate system, but it was revised and now it's only officially long lat. So. A JSON geometry is expected to only store long lat. In fact, you don't see any place where you indicate the coordinate system. That used to exist, but no longer there. Does it mean it's really, really limited to long lat? Actually, not really. There's nothing technically that limits this. And we actually do have customers who are using JSON encoding with, well, actually British National Grid coordinates. All right. You'll see the, the link here. That will actually help. That takes you here, there's not much here, there's just all there is, but there's also a link here that goes to the RFC 
or the RFC are uh, or IETF, uh, ISO documents that describe aspects of the internet, the IETF uh, engineering force and engineering task force. And so here you will find all the details about the, you know, the specification. It's actually pretty simple. It's not very complicated. You know, there's a lot of wording here, but at the end it is pretty simple. Uh, although so lots of obscure things like this, but not too important. Right? So let's look again at, let's continue here and now look at what GeoJSON really contains. So it contains three things, geometries, features, feature collection. It's important not to mix them up. Geometry is this. It's the, the JSON object with one property called type that can be point, line string, polygon, or the usual. And then another property called coordinates, which is an array of X and Y coordinates. For a point, it will be just X and Y, longitude, latitude. Not that long, longitude, latitude. Um, but they can be more complex. For example, they can be, uh, so a point, a line that will be an array of X and Y uh, points where each x, 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 each point sorry is itself an array of x and y numbers uh, so there's an array of x and y an array of arrays essentially and then a polygon would be an array of array of arrays why why that well because a polygon actually a line as well a multi-line string a polygon could have a polygon with holes in it so there are multiple polygons or multi-polygons so this can get a bit complex but then again it's not much more complex than uh, what we have in your geometry or, or well-known text uh, or, or GML. Right? So that's a geometry. Now, geometry is something you don't really see that much in your JSON because what you would deal with is feature. A feature is a geometry with properties. So it's itself a, a JSON object that has a type, which is feature. Uh, point, coin, et cetera. And then properties. The properties is just a list of uh, key value pairs. So JSON values, so city, name of city, segregation. They can be number of strings or dates uh, or anything you like. Okay, so it's a collection of properties. That's, that's an individual feature. And then you have the feature collection. So the feature collection will essentially let you do, construct something which will be like JSON files, a GeoJSON file. So a JSON, a GeoJSON file, for example, if you, export some data from some other system. Maybe you, you, uh, you know, pass the boundaries, but you will get as output a GeoJSON feature collection as a file. And that feature collection, we have a type feature collection, and then an array of features, type, 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 and property from the center. So pretty simple, Anything which might be a bit, uh, well, complex if it's the array within array within array. But then again, you would not write that manually. It should all be generated by software either um, by converting from some other system or maybe you build it using uh, Oracle facilities, part of the JSON uh, supporting database. So how does it all work? But here's an example. Okay, I start by creating a table with US cities, number of primary keys, cities, terrain, location, c uh, um, and, and this actually will contain a, a geometry, okay? a, a, a GeoJSON geometry as a c -lob. And I say it's a C lob. I can also in 21C say it's JSON type, which is more efficient than using C lob. It has some internal formatting and all sorts of um, no, optimizations. Then inserting, where it's just a string. So I just insert like that. Uh, and then I can create an index on JSON value location dollar returning as your geometry. This says take location. Dollar means, well, the whole document, which meaning here just this, this thing. And convert that into as your geometry and create a special index. <coughs> and then I can start doing queries on it. JSON value, location, black, and search and query, and do pretty much everything I can do with as your geometry. Yeah, that's that's basics in the database. Albert, before we move on, we have a question. Okay, sure. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, can you so, say the question? <clears throat> absolutely. So, um, is there any format to store geo and time together, finding proximity across time when using two points moving? Uh, well, GeoJSON is only 
geometries. So there's no time um, inside the SDO, uh, sorry, the, uh, the GeoJSON uh, uh, standard. So, so it can only contain, but you can include time as a property, for example, okay, as one of the properties of the object. If it's a moving object, well, then you could have maybe multiple copies of the object with different, uh, no, different property and times, uh, and then uh, you know different locations. If that's also the question. Now, of course, in the database, you can start using things like uh, possibly um, uh, including uh, things like linear referencing to, to to play around with locate. Well, sorry, with time. Uh, for example, knowing. Um, the path of a vehicle, not the route followed by a vehicle. If um, I'm adding in my line string things like uh, well, time, zero, and then 10 seconds, 50 seconds, et cetera, like that for each, each vertex, then I can know where is or was my vehicle at that time, let's say uh, 25 minutes from the start, or, and vice versa. Uh, if I know a certain time, uh, Oh, sorry, how, how long, how fast would the vehicle be driving along uh, these sort of things? Okay, great. So again, and we have a couple uh, more questions. GeoJSON is limited to, uh, oh, right, okay. So why only support for uh, WS84? Ah, that's a good question. That's, um, that's a good question. Um, why indeed? <laughs> well, you know, Martin is a GIS person, you know, like we are a number of GIS persons here. And we know that, uh, first of all, we know the earth, is, we've been told lies forever. The earth is not a sphere, we know. It's actually slightly flattened. And so uh, X and Y, there are like thousands uh, of different coordinate systems uh, in the world. I think the Oracle database has something like, uh, how much was on 3,000, 4,000, lots of them. But, if you want to talk about uh, coordinates to the average person in the street, and the, the idea would be, oh, yeah, of course, you mean long lat. That's what it is. And so, therefore, I think that's why, uh, that's why uh, the, the GeoJSON specification was simplified to only allow uh, long lat. But that's just declarative. Like I said, you can actually use any kind of coin system, but you have to know what it is because there's no room inside. Well, you can use a property for that. You can say property SRID equals or EPAG equals and, and the number. But it would be up to you in uh, in your application to make sure that you actually well, cater for the different coin systems. I'll see also another question here. Is there any impact on GeoJSON when considering using duality views? Ah, that's a good question. And to be honest, I don't know. Um, I've not played around with duality views in conjunction with, with GeoJSON. Uh, it's something I would need to look at, to be honest. But I I don't know. I'm not going to give any answer because I don't know. Thanks, so, Okay. Yeah. Right, so we know the basics. We know the structures, uh, right? That's fine. Now we look, the next step will be to look at how do we actually do things like importing GeoJSON, exporting, publishing, uh, playing with, uh, with GeoJSON, export, export uh, publish, access, etc. And for that, we're going to use that our, our best friend uh, that we have today, which is something that we introduced, um, what, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago, I think, um, as a way to let uh, people manage space and data database in ways which are not always type SQL, okay? it's like um, something that will manage your, your data for you. It will make in a catalog of data. In fact, let me go here. Uh, it, it has a, a concept of, of data sets. So it, it maintains a kind of a dictionary directory of all the data sets you know, that have been, which are really tables in a database, of course, but they are data sets. Um, also managing data sets, importing, exporting, so we'll see where that works. There's also a concept of projects. A project will be using maps with data from data sets. And you add the data set to a map by just drag and drop, dropping on a map and boom, it happens automatically. You can do all sorts of fancy mapping. Not all the possibilities that, that you GIS tool will do, but still you know, nice things for highlighting um, things, highlighting uh, objects and the ships, and then also doing queries. 
all right? Um, to find out about studio, well, I know we've done already sessions on studio, but quite a few years ago, so we made time to refer these sort of sessions. Um, it's available as an application in the marketplace, okay? Is what we call a quick start for on-premise deployment, which really, quick start is really on-premise, it's really on, on your desktop. It's sort of a single user packaging for your desktop. It's not really designed to be multiple people connecting and authenticating, uh, simply because we have a very, very simple authentication mechanism. Or you can also uh, deploy it as a, as a complete J Java application, Java web app, into your uh, web logic environment, to your applications. And here you will find uh, you know, um, explanation about your questions, and you can look at the documentation as well. Actually, I'm going to go here and start Studio, do I have, I have it here, Spatial Studio. No, Spatial Studio, here I'm using it locally. So nothing fancy here, as usernames. By default, it comes with just like a few, like a, I think admin, Dave, Bruce, etc. You'd have to add more, but again, this is a user. So I'm going to use admin like that, sign in. And the password is not admin, it's much more secure, it's called welcome one. Um, Sorry, I'm going to remove this bar here. All right. So let's try uh, something first, which is going to be uh, importing a. Uh, you can see here there are some projects I have. I've been playing around with all sorts of things. And so there are loads and loads of different projects here. Um, there are also loads and loads of, of data sets that I've been loading. And some of them, the one which have a red cross here, mean, well, they're not good any longer because I removed the table from the database, but they did not remove this here. So it's, it points into empty space. And some others they got like warnings. Uh, I'm not sure what that means here, but you know, the, the, but these ones are valid. The one with this little flag here are valid. Let me reorder it so that I'll see the latest first, here, the most recent first. And I'm going to create a data set. Now create a data set. <clears throat> uh, I can upload from a file, that's what I'm going to do there. But I can also say, well, I have an existing table in some schema in my database, and I'm going to use that. And there's some other things as well. OGC web map services, Cesium, and GeoJS, and URI. We'll see that as well. So here I'm going to take a file. Now, where is, where is my file here? Sorry. I think it's right here. I have some examples here. I'm going to use this GeoJSON file, the, air, the world airports. I can double click on it and it will not open, but if I do right click, open with uh, like this guy, maybe edit. And that's how it looks like, you know, it's a feature collection. And uh, uh, yeah, something as well, actually. The QJSON standard talks about type feature or geometry property, etc. And there's a type feature collection. There are other things here, you see, SRS, geodetic, etc. These are optional. These are not required. They're not part of the standard. So, so, so you, you may find this. You may actually see GeoJSON file, which have things like a bounding box. Uh, but, but these things are, are meaningless because it's always long Latin. So we're going to use this. I'm going to use this. Uh, so it's this, this guy here. No, sorry, it's this one. And I'm going to drag it. Uh, where is it? Here. Here. Drag it here. Okay, it's ready for, for reading. Doesn't say much, but it's ready for reading. I can also, of course, click here and then select the file. I can also actually select multiple files if I want. You have a directory full of, uh, of GeoJSON files. You could also zip file, which would be full of GeoJSON files. Here's just one, one file, so I'm going to say create. All right, it's importing. And then it shows me, well, what does it contain? The interpretation of the, of the Columns, uh, well, here we, it's, I can change this. Uh, this these are all strings. Uh, why would that not be a number? I don't know. We should have recognized that as a number. You know, this also runway length is clearly a number. So I should, I should be able to say, uh, make this numeric. The impact of this will be the kind of columns we'll see in the table. I have to specify also which connection. Yeah, there's also a concept of connection. So my my uh, studio client can connect to multiple databases. Um, 
These can be local databases, I mean, regular database on premise, it can also be autonomous databases, in which case it knows about the wallet and everything. So this is, I'm going to use uh, the connection that I call Scott, which happens to be a local connection. There are other connections here, actually these are the one I call ADB, is actually Scott, but in, an ADB, in one of my autonomous databases. But let's use this Scott locally. All right, submit. So it's uploading, we don't, this is uh, studio is asynchronous, so it's doing that, and I can do other things while this is taking place. Now, how do I know it's taking place? Well, there is a little uh, white bar here that is uh, jiggling left and right, and when it's finished, and it's it's done. Why is it taking so long? I wonder because these are just a small number of points, and then at the end it says I'm done. And now we can see it's available here with a little warning flag here. Okay, one issue to form. What's the issue? Well, <clears throat> Studio wants to have a unique single column identifier, kind of primary key for the objects. And here, there is no such thing. You know, GeoJSON has no concept of the primary key or anything. So I have to, well, specify one. So go to data set columns. And which one could I use here? There's this. It doesn't have a, sorry, yes, a numeric. It doesn't have to be numeric. It can be a string. So here, for example, I could use this. This is the uh, uh, the IATA airport code, the three-letter code, like CDG, FRA, LHR. That's unique. Uh, it might actually be uh, a, uh, well, this one was not a four-digit uh, ICAO. There might be, uh, I'm not sure what this one is here. Well, let's try and use uh, that code, right? So use the key. I have to validate, make sure it's unique, doesn't contain null, it's valid, so yeah, apply. So it's going to add now a primary key index. I'm not sure it makes the primary key, but definitely creates a unique index in this one. So there it is. Now I want to look at this. Well, create a new project. There it is. All right, and the project initializes with the default map. That's a map that's produced by Oracle from, uh, well, uh, I think this is OpenStreetMap data, so let's, drag it here and here we go. And we have to wait a little while until it brings down it and yeah, so here it is. So now what we've taken done here, we have taken a GeoJSON file and in like oh, a few minutes, brought it into our database and able to make maps with it and then start doing crazy operations. Another thing we can do is to uh, fetch data directly from a URL. Okay, for that, I need to uh, go back here because I need to remember the URL. I think it's this, this one here. You know, it's from the USGS earthquake database. So let's look at what this looks like. I think actually, um, I don't have it here. This thing. So this is a, a, a well, data distribution system that has, well, this particular case, information about earthquakes worldwide. I mean, recorded by the USGS. And you can see, you can get in KML if you want. KML is the uh, keyhole markup language, the one used for annotating Google Maps, Google Earth, Virtual Globe, but also Google Maps. There's also one in QuakeML, which is some kind of, I guess, I guess you know, um, XML-like language for, for, for Quake. A spreadsheet even, but we're going to use this one, GeoJSON summary feed. There's also a JSON detail feed, but look at the, the summary feed. All right. And so that's what it looks like. Feature collection, there's metadata here, you see, there's a, there's a bounding box. Like I said, these ones are completely optional. They are just there because they provide interesting information about, uh, you know, count, status, etc. and then the, the bounding box I discovered. Interesting also here is that the geometries here are 3D. That's possible. I can have X, Y, and Z. So the depth, in that case, the depth of the epicenter of the, of the quake. We're going to take not all earthquakes, but only the ones with magnitude four, five, and plus um, over the past 30 days. Okay, so let's go here. And we've seen it briefly now. Safari is just making it look nicer for us. And so here it is. Uh, let's copy this URL, go back to here, go back to this, create data set from GeoJSON URL, 
like this. Okay, and then say, uh, I've hit return. Return, create. <clears throat> Notice what it says here. <clears throat> Access directly, data are not uploaded. So when I said they are uploaded, they're not really uploaded. The next release of Studio will do that. You have an option of either have using this live only, like I'm doing here, or uh, using it and uh, uploading it into the database. Right? No, it's not going to be uploaded. It's just going to be uploaded to Studio, but not in, inside the database. Right? So here it is. Oh, same thing. Albert, this might be a great time to answer. So submit. Um, sure. Sorry. Um, we have one more Q&A, and it's about GeoJSON URLs. GeoJSON URL also supports SODA. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, absolutely yes, because it's just a URL, essentially. As long as the URL produces a GeoJSON feature collection, Right, so feature collection, feature, 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 etc. Then it's fine. Actually, uh, this also, um, sorry, uh, like that. What is also possible here for Studio is to have a single feature. That's also possible. So either a feature object, feature with the properties and then geometry, or a complete uh, collection with uh, with a number of, of these, and they can come from a soda, from in fact anything that produces. In fact, that's one of the things that we wanted to talk about. But during our next session, where we talk about how do we make this? How do we use SODA? How do we use our RDS to produce these things from a database? Okay. Thank you. So it's here. I didn't uh, change the name. I could have called it something else, but we'll leave it like that. And so here also, you know, it says, oh, yeah, hold on. I need a key for that. So we have set columns. <clears throat> Notice we are using database types, even though the data is not really in the database. It's just, well, in memory of, uh, it's actually no, not in, I mean, it's available to the, to the um, uh, studio server, but not stored in a database. So what could I do here? I don't think there is any of these that, uh, uh, yeah, I think the IDs, let me see, no, there should be one. <clears throat> I think this, uh, there's a number here I can use for that. I know that time, title, tsunami, type, type, some label. There should be some unique thing. I think this code here. The code is, is unique. Credit key. Yeah. No, yes, it's unique. So fine. It's okay. Then I can use that. So now you see the the little mark has gone. Now I can add that. Well, I can add that to the active project, for example, the one I have my airports already. So if I go back to my active project. Now I have my uh, earthquakes and well, let's take these guys off. We don't need them and actually bring the earthquakes instead. So here are my earthquakes. Well, and then I can do, if I want, I can do all sorts of little fancy things. Like uh, for example, um, I'm going to go through all of these, but for example, this has all the, all the points that represent earthquakes. I can now do something like make this size of the circle proportional to the uh, uh, the intensity of the earthquake, magnitude of the earthquake. The bigger the heart, the, the more stronger the earthquake, the higher magnitude, the bigger the so we, or different colors as well, right? depending on categories between, uh, let's say more than seven would be red and others would be different colors. Here I'm going to do something else. I'm going to say, well, instead of having different um, object, I'm going to do a heat map. All right, so that heat map shows Nicely, the concentration of earthquakes, and we see a lot of earthquakes along the Pacific coast of Asia and also here, Pacific coast of uh, South, South America. And there are other possibilities, like for example, do this clustering <clears throat> that will show well how many earthquakes are in person phasing. Again, this is <clears throat> sorry, this was very easy well, as long as I have the URL to the site, it's going to be fetched into Studio, and I can use Studio to, to look at it. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me skip a bit. Uh, actually, let, let's maybe uh, skip the. Uh, I'm not going to go through it because at the end they don't do. But I'm going to take a data set here, do a right click, and say export. 
and then choose the format. It can be CSV, it can be GeoJSON. If GeoJSON, like this, when I export, I'm going to get a zip file with the content of the data as GeoJSON, right? Other things I can do, and this is something I probably can show quickly here, is uh, um, let's go back to a data sets and let's look at uh, some other, uh, let's search for world. There's a data set which is world ports. Let's say I want to publish this one, make it available for others to use. Uh, well, I, I'm uh, going to look at properties. And you see here, there's a GeoJSON endpoint that actually points. I'm going to actually copy it like that. I think it's copied. And I can now use that in my browser, for example, but also in applications right here. And so now I'm getting a GeoJSON file that has all my thoughts, right? uh, feature collection, features, point, location, etc., and properties. All right? So that, that makes it very easy also to publish the data that has been managed by uh, your studio. Access has rest. Well, here I use the word airports. Hey, no, let's look a bit. Yeah. Sorry, one more question for you. Um, will the changes in source data be synchronized in Spatial Studio? The changes in the source data be synchronized in Spatial Studio. Ah, uh -huh, that's a good point. Um, and actually, I've not. <laughs> it's another one I can't really reply with certainty. You know, but I guess it would be nice. But I'm not sure we do that. Uh, if we, uh, you know, if if the data changes, we have a, one more earthquake. How can we get that in studio? Do we actually download the thing? And that's something I need to look at and understand. Sorry. I think that's true too. I think that you have to go and refresh the data. I, th I think, you, yeah, yeah, because the studio does not do it auto. I mean, it doesn't do it automatically. Okay? You generally, even if it's coming from a, from a database. Um, and for that, there is. Uh, here, if I look at, uh, go back to, to my project here, go back here, and I look at, at this one here, and I'll right click, uh, refresh mm -hmm. layer. Okay, so refresh layer will go and fix it, back, go and fetch the game. But if you're looking at automatically refresh, next. Okay, so we've we've seen <clears throat> the principle of GeoJSON. We've seen how that works and uh, you know how we can use and play around with it using Studio. In the database, though, how do we go from geometry to GeoJSON? How does this work under the cover? Well, the, the SGO geometry type has a method called get GeoJSON. So if I say select C locate get GeoJSON as JSON from newer cities, that will return as as JSON uh, GeoJSON geometries. The only thing to remember is to always use an alias. You must use an alias for this tool. So city is C, C dot location. Why is that? Well, all these dots confuse the SQL parser. So by using an alias, we make sure that it knows what, what you really want. You know, that's it. This is really a column and a method on that column. There's also a function called SEOutil2 GeoJSON that will do the same thing. A feature, how do we build a feature from the database? Well, we use uh, standard JSON manipulation functions, like JSON object, type is a feature, properties is not generated, and then colon city variation and the values of this. And geometry, which is C location, get your JSON, ask some JSON, or all the function. Right? And the result will be a completely um, self-contained and valid feature. Constructing a feature collection. Well, again, we use the same thing. We use JSON object with, uh, and inside we use JSON array ag, which is essentially an aggregation, something that will actually take multiple objects and aggregate them as a single array. Right? So it's nothing um, mysterious. It's just this is just standard uh, JSON manipulation. The reverse from JSON to SEO geometry. Well. We provide a base function that will pass the content of uh, a geometry, this geo geometry, uh, and and turn that into an SDO geometry. Without any 
coordinate system, it will be 4336. If you want to have a different coordinate system, we can do that. So again, it, it, even though it's not really something, you, you can do that. You can actually use different coordinate systems. So JSON value, but this one does not mean you can choose a switch, which is rooms always long that. For a feature, well, it's similar. It's, you know, again, get the feature properties. We've seen that already at the beginning of the session. You can get selected properties only if you want. And to build a complete you know, feature with, so it's like this, JSON value, location, feature, geometry, with the properties uh, next to it, returning as your geometry. The, sorry, this is to return the geometry, and this is to return, uh, well, the geometry as well, just different location. Oops. Okay, so a feature collection, well, the feature collection will be read using a JSON table construct. So this is the reverse of the, uh, the array aggregator will take multiple features and bring them into a single array. Here we are actually passing the content of the array and splitting it, shredding it into uh, multiple uh, features. That can then be, for example, now here we do a select, we could have now create table as select to shred a, a GeoJSON feature collections or GeoJSON document into individual rows. Indexing and querying, well, you can do that. It might not be something we want to do, but you can do that. You can create indexes on G, uh, GeoJSON geometry. So you can you don't have to convert the GeoJSON geometries into SDO geometry. You can keep them as GeoJSON geometry, as strings essentially, but not optimized strings and, uh, and JSON objects in 23C. Um, but then again, maybe it's probably more efficient to, to store them, to convert them once and for all into SDO geometry and maybe have a trigger to maintain the two because there's going to be overhead. Really, when like this thing here has not a lot of overhead, but still some overhead, it comes to passing the content of the geometry into an SDO geometry. It still has to pass the uh, JSON. Okay, same thing for feature extracting. And so here we actually extract uh, the geometry from the feature and create the index on that one. And then how do we query? Well, again, we can do the same thing. So within this one, this, this looks at uh, all the interstates which are within 150 kilometers from one, sorry, all the, the cities which are uh, within uh, 150 kilometers from one particular interstate. And uh, notice we search here on JSON value. So we do not really materialize the SEO geometry, but we just do that on the fly. Features, well, features, we know how that works. It's the same thing. We extract geometry from the feature and do the same thing. So which one should we use? You know, well, in my opinion, I think we probably want to use as your geometry from a, from a performance perspective. So not necessarily do it directly on the, on the, on the, on the JSON uh, geometry, because at the end, it's still a text structure, a serialized structure, which does require passing, and maybe we want to avoid doing this passing over and over again. It depends on the use case. Yeah, you know, there are just conclude. two more questions. Uh, yeah. Sorry, before All we right. move on. So back to mm -hmm. our um, our refreshes. Ah, okay. Can those be Can done, refresh by API? done by API? Can refresh done by API? Um, <laughs> it's not the case where I need to read really double check, but it's yes, probably yes. Yeah. Why? Because, um, because um, Studio has itself a REST API. So you can drive Studio to a REST API. Um, for example, people have been using that to drive the uh, geocoding API. Okay? Not geocoding, you want to geocode using the Oracle Z location services. Yeah, but there are restrictions on this. It's only possible if you do that through an Oracle developed tools or application. And Studio happens to be one of these. So you're not allowed legally to go directly and use that uh, uh, REST API, but you can tell uh, Studio to do it for you. So um, there are also API calls, pretty much all functions are available uh, interactively are possible. So for example, uploading a file, uh, uh, importing, exporting data, etc. The free refresh, I don't know, I guess, it may be, but I would have to look at it exactly to see whether it is possible to be to be refreshed that way. 
Okay. Uh, oh, Sergey has a question about can Jewish be for 3D? That's a good question as well. If you look at, uh, depends what you mean by 3D, I would say. If you look at the structures of uh, Jewish, in fact, the earthquake, for example, they have X, Y, Z. So X, Y, and some elevation, negative elevation or whatever, an elevation. So this is not really 3D. This is more like 2D and a half. It's 2D with some elevation. So that could also be used for a line, like a road, maybe going on a, on a cable, cable path, a pipe, going up and down sideways this way. Uh, but generally, when you talk about 3D, you also a triangular surface, you know, made with triangles with X, Y, Z. But generally, if you mean things like uh, building outlines or 3D solids, no, it doesn't do that. It only does uh, so two and a half dimension. So uh, X, Y, Z points lined with X, Y, Z, and then surfaces made of, uh, of, of faces, of triangular faces, or any other face. Thank you. So yeah, yeah, another question? I don't think so, it's, uh, yeah, we're done. So uh, REST data services, <clears throat> again, I'm not going to go through this, but <clears throat> that's what uh, you know, RDS and SODA also do. They allow you to do things like, uh, well, <clears throat> issue queries over table like this. This will <clears throat> take to, um, connect to, to a database, like here, uh, sorry, connect to the ORDS server that is, uh, exposed by a database, <clears throat> our local host here. Um, our schema name, table name, and then a query that says, give me all the cities which are where state abbreviation is Nevada, and I'm going to get these things, these things back. And notice this will be um, um, in the, uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, GeoJSON. But we'll talk about that uh, later on, and later on during the next session. And you can use, of course, your ideas as well. And then we can to also update data, to create new data, to upload data, GeoJSON data, using GeoJSON in your database. So are there other questions? We are, you know, we are pretty much on time. So learning more about spatial, we always have that list of URLs you can follow to find out more. <clears throat> if you've never played with the uh, studio, well, I encourage you to do that, that to just, uh, well, download it uh, on your laptop and play around with it. It's just an easy, uh, it's easy download and unzip. There's no real configuration. It does require a database. It will not run without an org database simply because it keeps all its configuration in a repository, in a registry, we call it, in an Oracle database. So all the projects, the data sets, uh, where they are, and where they come from, etc. This is all kept in a database. So you must have an Oracle database. It can be a local database, or it can be a uh, autonomous database or any other database. And the first time you will start it up and connect, it will prompt you, well, give me a connection to a database, to so username, password, to a database where I want to keep my repository. Then once this is done, you can now then use databases, data sets from any database, not just that one, any database you have access to. Okay. There are live labs, bit.ly, special live labs. Well, you can follow, there will, you will find, uh, well, a few, but a few live lab that use a Studio, including one that shows how you can actually also uh, install Studio as a cloud marketplace application instead of downloading on your laptop, but just using marketplace. Point you to documentation, uh, reference architecture, some blogs as well, uh, YouTube videos about spatial and, um, and Studio, and also LinkedIn groups and, uh, and Twitters. And, you know, we're always happy to answer questions that way as well. Yeah, any questions? I don't know. I mean, we've had you know, the answer to the question. We have one more question in the Q&A. If Oracle can serve GeoJSON, is there any need for a Geo server? <laughs> well, 
It's a good question. Uh, we could, in theory, say, yeah, well, no, we don't need a, a specific, um, you know, tool in between like uh, like GeoServer. Now, GeoServer, if you talk about a GeoServer generally, just for serving data, no, no. Like Studio, for example, could be the, the GeoServer you want. It's a, it's a server, but, it, but it's a server, it's just uh, called Studio. Um, or RDS can help also doing this. Uh, if you mean the GeoServer, the geo server, the open source geo server, does more because it also publishes things like uh, um, WMS, WFS, etc., which we do but using different uh, facilities. Not sure that answers the question, but uh, I think yes, it could could be used for quite a few things. And what about performance? Uh, questions? Hmm. I was wondering when somebody would talk about performance. Anything about performance, says Martin. Um, about perspective, you know, is it? Let me think about it. Um, <clears throat> generating, generating um, geojson from SDO geometries is pretty fast because it is native. You're right, okay, not using GeoServer. No, I mean, doing it in the database. Like if you publish it using you know, like ORDS or so that additional things, uh, it's fast. It's it's uh, faster than uh, publishing uh, GML or well-known text or well-known binary. Actually, sorry, not, not well-known text. Simple reason that um, well-known binary, uh, GML, KML are all done by invoking Java and database. And it, it, it's okay, but it's not really that fast, to be honest. Maybe there's also some, but anyway. Um, so much so that a few releases back, I think it's 12.2, we uh, rewrote a well-known text generator to be uh, also native code. And, and the other ones are being written at the moment as well. But JSON is native from the beginning. So, so generating GeoJSON, JSON, that's native. It doesn't call any Java or anything. It's really native code. So it is pretty efficient. And same for the parser. The parser is also fairly efficient because of that, because it's native. But there's going to be some, some overhead. And clearly, uh, uh, parsing a, a, a string or detecting the... the Squiggly brackets and of and, uh, and the brackets and uh, detecting the X and Y. Where are they? Where are the parameters? Where are the right? that that does have some overhead uh, with, compared to having these things natively in a database table. So that's why I think the use case is probably going to be more. I keep my data in a geometry native for doing my own, uh, you know, queries and manipulation and processing and and LRS and all of these <laughs> things. Um, and only convert it to GeoJSON when I need to publish it and somebody wants it. Excellent. Yeah. If there are no more questions, then I guess we can uh, call it a day. So on next session, sorry, is that June 13 or June, June 16? I think, Denis, you said, I, I wrote here June 13, but I'm, I wonder if you know June, June 16. Is, is that correct? No, I think it's the 13th. <laughs> oh, oh. It is 13th, so it's not a Friday, I hope. Um, so the next session will be June the 13th, uh, when you will find it, in the, you will be told about it anyway. And, um, and that one will be actually uh, come like part two of what we're going to do today. Is, that's all about um, publishing data, including GeoJSON uh, and ingesting data uh, from through, through the ORDS and SODA mechanism of the database. And that will conclude uh, our session today. And we are, oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you for your time over there as always. <clears throat> and everyone have a great day. Mm -hmm.